Nail besties, this video has been a long time coming and I finally sat down to do it because it is a lot. Now we've already exposed beetles, it's time to do everyone else. I catch a lot of luck for being the beetles hater and the truth is is that beetles is just a part of the bigger problem which is just all of these companies that flooded the market especially back in 2020 during the pandemic with the rise of at-home DIY nails that were unregulated, untested, and literally just came in to make as much money as possible. Beatles just so happen to come out on top, but there are many other companies that are part of the problem, and so we're gonna talk about them today. Let's get into it. So I emailed or reached out to as many of the Amazon brands that I could find and then the ones that didn't reach out to me, a lot of the SDS I received from some nail besties. About a month ago, I put out a short video asking for if you had an SDS for an Amazon company to please send it to me. And so thank you to everyone who did. All right, so the first company that I wanna start with is McCart. Not to be confused with McCart Pro. I think those are actually two different companies apparently. Not really sure what's going on there, but anywho, they actually reached out to me for a collaboration based on one of my posts where I talk about using the McCart rhinestone glue. And as you all know, it is probably the best rhinestone glue on the market. So sometimes if I really need something to stay on there, I will risk it for the biscuit and use it anyway. And I have not had a problem that way because it's so far from any of my skin and it's on top of other product. And so they asked if I wanted to collaborate and I responded, yes, your rhinestone glue is by far the best. I still use it even with my allergy, but I do not think I can use any of your polishes with my allergy. Would you be able to provide me the SDS for the base colors, base and top coat to see if it would work for me? So after a bit of back and forth, they did end up sending me their SDS for their poly gel, where I noted that it's just acrylic polymer, polyurethane, and ethyl phenyl phosphonate, silica, whatever. There was no HEMA. But then I remembered that I actually had a poly gel from a cart from before my allergy. So this would have been mid-2024. And so this one is acrylicopolymer, polyurethane, and hydroxyethyl methacrylate. So it did have HEMA. So I asked and I was like, hey, I actually have one of your old poly gels um, and it has HEMA. So can you confirm that this is a correct SDS? Or, you know, did the formula change? And so the response was, hey, it might not have changed, but for safety's sake, you could choose a different product. Yeah, that didn't sit right with me. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought it. And so this is their new poly gel and it's acrylic polymer, polyurethane, and it matches the SDS perfectly. So we love that. And I actually will be trying this in a different video. Y'all know I'm a poly gel girly. So having another poly gel option is great. Now they also sent me their SDS for their rhinestone glue and it's acrylate copolymer, hydroxyethyl acrylate, and then everything else you see there. So the photo initiator percentage is all right. And we have 10.3% here which is not terrible at all. So if you are using that rhinestone glue, because let's be honest, it is the best, feel free to continue to do so. Now, ultimately I did buy this myself because I did not want to be locked into a collaboration with a brand that I may or may not use. I want to be able to look at things objectively and ultimately my credibility means more to me than any collaboration. But it does seem that with those two products, they are pretty decent. So good on McCart for making positive strides. Their old formula did have HEMA, their new one does not. And I am starting to notice this trend, absolutely here for it. It is unfortunate that it took this much and thousands of people getting allergies for companies to start reformulating. I am very, very glad to see it happen. Now, I still know nothing about their gel polishes. They didn't send me any of that. Okay, so moving on. The next one, this is one I see all the time recommended as a safer alternative to Beatles. And that is Gayoi. Gayoi, Goy, however the heck you say that. So I reached out to Goy, and the only way you can really do that is through a contact form on their website, which I filled out and got a zero response. However, a nail bestie did come through and send them to me. I don't really hold it against companies if they don't respond. They're not obligated to provide me with an SDS because I'm not using it in a salon or any sort of business setting. And also, I'm sure the second they see my name, they're like, absolutely not. <laughs> So a lot of people, when they're recommending Gayoi as a better alternative, they're like, oh, it's HEMA-free, it's HEMA-free. And I really didn't understand where people are getting this from because I'm like, 
know where this has HEMA. But then I went on their website and realized why people are saying this, because they advertise as HEMA free. Here's their Q&A. Is gay oil gel polish HEMA free or gel polish formulated without HEMA? Really? Really? I went ahead and bought their matte top coat and HEMA is the second ingredient. So why are y'all saying that it's HEMA free? So not only is it not HEMA free, but the HEMA content is 35 to 45%. That is wild. The photo initiator range is one to 5%, which is fine. But getting this stuff on your skin, even in the tiniest little bit, is going to lead to significant exposure because of such high amounts of HEMA. I would absolutely not risk it with this brand. Not only because of such high amount of HEMA, but also because they're advertising as HEMA free when clearly they are not. However, to their credit, at least they don't tell you to do a skin test before applying. So they've got that going for them. But overall, I would definitely stay away from this brand. It's just seriously not worth the risk. Like, honestly, I would say Beatles is better than this. And y'all know that says a lot. But, and that's assuming if we're going by their new formula and their new SDS, which we all know is not accurate. But anyway, at the price point, there are much better things out there. So it's really just not worth the risk of potentially 45% HEMA being anywhere near or on your skin. Next up, we have Miss Melody Susie. Now, y'all know I've had a lot to say about this brand. Some good, some bad. What I will say is that they responded immediately to my SDS request. So that was very pleasantly surprising. Now, the SDS that I requested was for their Fleur Wee collection, which is now, I think, Sweet Scents. I don't know. They've got some weird stuff going on there with that that I still haven't figured out. One of the besties sent me the SDS for their regular polish, not the Sweet Scents, not the Fleur Wee or the Hema Free line, just their regular line. And we're looking at 50 to 65% acrylic copolymer, 10 to 25% hydroxypropyl methacrylate, and 10 to 20% HEMA. It's not great. We're looking at potentially up to 45% monomer content, which, again, not worth the risk, especially considering that Melody Susie polishes tend to be a little bit higher priced. So I would say that's a pass. I also got the one for their cat eyes, and we're looking at 15 to 25% HEMA. Photo initiator is in normal range, 2 to 4%, and it is polyester based. So not terrible. All right, now let's see the one that Melody Susie sent me. I had the entire Melody Susie Fleur Week collection, which I recently gave away. And I did give them a very good review at first. That's because I only tested on one finger. I had to do all of my fingers. And once I did, I did have a reaction. And that was because of the acryloyl morpholine. All right, so we've got aliphatic urethane acrylate 48%. And then we have ACMO acryloyl morpholine at 37%. Yikes. And the, this, these are not ranges. They're exact percentages. So it's for sure... 37%. That is not good. Not good at all. And because they use such high levels of acryloyl morpholine, this is why you get the heat spikes from hell with these Melody Susie products because ACMO polymerizes faster than HEMA. It releases a lot more of an exothermic reaction and that's what causes the heat spikes. Now, if you don't have an allergy, acryloyl morpholine is known to be less allergenic than HEMA. It does have a larger structure and it should be okay to use. Their top coat and base coat also have 25 to 35% ACMO. And the base coat has 20 to 30% ACMO and 10 to 20% isobornal methacrylate. So again, not great, especially for a product that claims to be hypoallergenic. And that comes down to the biggest issue I have with this company is the way that they market this. They're saying that it's skin safe, that it's plant-based. I'm sorry, plant where? Because the only thing I see that is plant-based is soybean oil. I mean, they are literally saying this stuff is skin safe. Like, Melody Susie, please stop it. Please stop it. Y'all know I love me some Melody Susie. I literally have their dust collector right here. Up until very recently, I was using their e-file. I have a ton of Melody Susie stuff. But please, please, please stop advertising these as hypoallergenic and skin safe. Like, no, th these are absolutely not skin safe. You get these on your skin, you're going to have a bad time. To the point where, honestly, like even their regular Lima Free line have less monomer content than their hypoallergenic line. So that's kind of insane to me. All right, moving on to everyone's favorite Beatles alternative, Model 1s. Now, Model 1s and Beatles and all of these, like when you look more deep into it, they all come from 
the city of Guangzhou from the Guangdong region of China. So you can pretty much bet that these are all made in similar or the same factories. However, Model 1s quite pleasantly surprised me. So the first thing is that they really gave me the runaround. Like they did not want to give me these SDSs. They kept saying like, why do you need them? Why do you need them? What country are you in? Because the regulations differ. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense because the product is the same regardless of which country you're in. Anyway, after a lot of back and forth, they finally sent them to me. At first, they only sent me a screenshot, which just had glycopolymer, hema, isobornum methacrylate, and hydroxychlohexylphenyl ketone. W what am I doing with this? Like, I don't even know if that's coming from their actual SDS. There's nothing. So I asked if they could provide the actual SDS that had the, the concentration of the ingredients. Finally, they asked me for photos of the boxes and the corresponding labels. I was like, I sent you the product link, you know, what the heck. Then there's, they said that the release of the document required internal company approval. Fair enough. I sent my first email on October 30th and I finally got the SDS November 9th. So finally they sent it and surprise, surprise, it's redacted what <laughs> so for their actual colors their gel polish acrylic copolymer hydroxyethyl methacrylate hydroxycyclohexyl and diphenylphosphine oxide no percentages whatsoever this is one that i'm still missing so if any of you besties have their scs with the percentages please send it over but then the interesting thing is that they did leave the percentages for all the other ingredients like silica carmine beta carotene whatever so all of those percentages are there but the ones that actually matter were redacted that is so so sus to me Another thing to note is that all these SDSs, like if you haven't realized by now, they all look the same. They all have the, those blue letters going across them that say MSDS. That term is outdated. That is not OSHA compliant. But anywho, super sus and I would 1000% recommend avoiding this company at all costs. With HEMA being the second ingredient, you can bet it's going to be fairly high. And we don't know what the photo initiator level looks like. So we have no idea what is in this. Quite problematic for anyone trying to avoid allergies. At least Beatles was transparent about theirs before they deleted it, but at least they had it, right? So they've got that going for them. Now, interestingly enough, they also sent me the base and the top coat, and those were not redacted. So we've got acrylate copolymer at 45%, another acrylate ethyl hexyl acrylate copolymer at 35%, and then again, acrylate copolymer at 12%, and acrylate copolymer again at 8%. Now, obviously, these are all different copolymer formulas and no photo initiator. And so I went ahead and bought them and here they are. Now on the box, the ingredients are acrylicopolymer, acrylicopolymer, acry acrylate hydroxyesters, acrylicopolymer. So it perfectly matches the SDS, but again, no photo initiator. Legally, they are able to do that if it's under 1%, but that's not great. And also if it's not considered yet a harmful ingredient, they technically don't have to list it. Check out this incredibly insightful comment from Chrisania Neri, who works closely with Doug Shun as well. I also got the SES for their nail glue, which is a uh, polyurethane base, 57%, acrylate copolymer 22, and then acrylate copolymer 19. And this one does have the photo initiator listed at 2%. Totally fine. So the base, the top, and the glue are actually surprisingly decent, but the color gels I would very, very much avoid. We have no idea what's in them or at what concentration, but we do know they do have HEMA. And I don't really see a reason to use a base and a top coat from a different company from the color gels that you're using. They may not work well together, so if possible, just avoid altogether. But I will say I was pleasantly surprised to see that their most important, which is the base and top are pretty decent. So a question I get asked all the time, is Model 1s better than Beatles? And the answer is slightly. The funny thing is, is that in this case, the Beatles top and base coat are more of a problem, but their color gels are okay. Again, we're talking about their new HEMA-free formula, not the old little black bottles. Very important distinction. And when it comes to Model 1s, it's the opposite. Their base and the top coat are fine, but their color gels are a problem. So if you absolutely have to use these and stay in like the cheap polish world, I would use the Beatles Hema Free colors with the Model 1's base and top. Obviously, I don't recommend doing any of that, but if you have to, that's going to be your best bet. Then we have Born Pretty. They did not answer me at all. I was not able to get anything and none of the besties sent me anything either. So complete question mark on that one. I will keep digging and seeing if I can find anything. 
Hallie the Nail Babe did review this one, Double Rhythm. I get asked about that one a lot. Apparently the pigmentation wasn't great. The formula itself just kind of sucked. And we're looking at an exact percentage of 24% HEMA, which again is not great. With about 4% photo initiator, which is fine. Definitely not the worst, but there's better things out there. Well, okay, besties, that does it. I think that covers a good majority of the most famous Amazon brands. And again, I will say that it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I was very glad to see companies like McCart, for example, just reformulate. I am glad overall to see it happening and that even the cheap polish world is moving towards better and less allergenic formulas. I will say that out of all of them, I think the biggest offender is Gayoi because 45%, what is that? And then Model One's completely redacting the percentages for their gel polish color is some crazy work. Then followed up by Melody Susie's crazy 37% ACMO. Because again, I feel like I need to reiterate that HEMA isn't the only problem. The best thing to do is look at the overall monomer content. HEMA does so happen to be the most allergenic because it is the smallest, but that doesn't mean that because it's HEMA free, like you're good to go, it's safe. Absolutely not. Especially when you're looking at monomer concentrations over 30%, regardless of if it's HEMA or something else, of even with correct levels of photo initiators, sure, the polish may be able to cure under proper conditions, but you have to remember that the majority of these products that I've talked about either have no lamp or a really, really terrible one. So the chances of your product fully curing in the lamps that these products come with, I don't know about that. So at that point, you're kind of just playing a guessing game, which of the better lamps are able to cure this polish. And really that's the biggest issue with these cheap Amazon companies is that it's all a guessing game. These products are not tested. They haven't been tested with a compatible lamp. So you really are just hoping that that stuff is curing. And when it comes to high monomer content, that's why that's a problem. Because again, it's not just about not getting it on your skin. If the product is under curing, it's going to end up on your skin anyway. And now we have options in the cheap polish world that are solely polymer. And so if you're going to be taking that risk where you have a product that you don't know which lamp it is compatible with, you're going to have less issues when you're under curing a polymer based product than when you're under curing something with higher amounts of monomer. And that's all I am trying to get people to understand. So anyway, that was it for this one. I'm glad I finally got around to it. I have been avoiding it for ages, but now y'all see why there was a lot of information, a lot to discuss. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I try to answer every single comment as you guys have seen. All right, besties, now we have other exciting stuff coming up, but that is all for this one. Of course, if you aren't already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I bought a bunch of stuff on Black Friday, so I have lots of stuff to try for you, and I can't wait to do that. As always, thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one.